Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Gay from Scratch and let's talk about the future of the Godot game engine. Why are we talking about the future of the Godot engine? Well, there's two good reasons for that. First off, Godot 3.1 beta was just released last week. Now this beta is intended to be the final part before 3.1 is fully released, hopefully within about a month's time. So now there's a feature phrase, what we are going to see in Godot 3.1 is in Godot 3.1. At this point in time, everything at this point beyond is just an improvement, a bug fix, that kind of stuff. No new features. So that means it's a good time to start looking towards the future, which is exactly what Juan, and I'm going to brutalize your name here, Linietsky? Yeah, I've never said your name before, Juan. So uh, basically, the lead developer of Godot uh, is put down to paper or to Twitter what his intentions are for Godot 4.0 in the future. So basically, this is his personal to-do list. Now, do keep in mind, Godot is now much more than one man. Now, it used to be him and his partner were pretty much Godot. And he is, this is the guy that originally open-sourced Godot. And he probably continues to be by far the biggest contributor to Godot. But there are a number of of people working and contributing to Godot, including a couple of full-time employees. So just because something isn't on this list doesn't mean it's not going to happen. And it doesn't guarantee you that everything on this list is going to happen, but this is basically the lead developer's self-made to-do list of things to look at. And he's done two tweets. One was uh, a set of things to do with the renderer or Godot itself, and the other one was all about physics improvements. So now we're gonna take a look at both of them. First off, let's look at the Godot 4.0 to-do list. So this is generalized stuff, but mostly this is all about the renderer. And the top thing you're going to see, we're gonna keep the renderer kind of as it is now, stick with the same design and port it to Vulkan. Now, if you don't know, Vulkan is pretty much the next version of OpenGL. It is closer to the hardware and theoretically is the future unless you're in Mac land, in which case the future is who knows what they're going to dictate to you. But Vulkan is pretty much the low-level cross-platform API of choice for most game engines going forward, and they're going to port to it. Now, a lot of times you start to see about a 30% improvement over OpenGL performance to Vulkan. So this is one of those changes that will have ramifications across the board. On top of that, we are seeing move tile filter mip map flags from textures to shaders and use eight pre-bound samplers for this so textures become bindless. I'd like to see this moved out of the texture in the importing process, so I am fully on board with that change. Add shader caching. Hopefully that, ooh, I did not mean to press that button. That was scary, sorry about that. Hopefully shader caching also improves some of the importing speeds or the initial load up of the project. So I'm, I'm gonna be interested to see what shader caching actually adds to the scenario. Uh, in the 3D side, we're gonna see a lot of basically spec list type features. So we're seeing things like God rays in here. Well, we'll do it from the top. Motion vectors, uh, CPU based occlusion calling. Uh, occlusion calling is basically the process of getting rid of everything that isn't currently drawn. Um, Add tiled and clustered lighting modes, add god rays for directional lights, add volume, uh, vol volume, volumetry uh, for spot and omni lights. Um, see about replacing the subsurface ambient occlusion algorithm for a more modern one. Add a height field cone tracing for a world global, global illumination. Add projector textures for omni and spotlights. Add decal support. Add volumetric fog that works with tiled and clustered lighting modes. Add multi-threaded render list generation. Add custom um, render target support to render extra data. Add stencil buffer support. Um, Add post-processing shader support with access to normal depth stencil and custom render targets. Rewrite the light map baking code to use polygons instead of voxels and potentially optimize it with GPU and AI denoiser. Add particle attractors and 3D force fields. Make eliminating based rest matrix from skeleton and animation importing optional so new users won't have to find the really crappy made models they downloaded from the internet don't work. And um, in the 2D side of things, make 2D lighting work in one pass to increase performance, add multi-threaded render list generation to the Vulkan backend, add batching to the GLES2 backend. Now I know one thing that people are saying across the board is we want better 2D performance, and I get that. The performance of Godot compared to like Unity or uh, LibGDX or Monogame on straight 2D performance has always lagged. And this is an area where I think most 2D game developers, especially in the mobile space, would love to see some improvements. But you are going to see performance improvements to a certain degree just from the Vulkan port. I'd also, this is kind of confusing me, add batching, because I don't know that there's sprite batching right now in the, um, the current 
GLES3 version, and I think this is one of those kind of areas where there's a, that basically Gajol makes a whole lot of draw calls. But hopefully that is something we will see in general in the improvements as well, because I know a lot of people are really screaming out for 2D improvements. And a lot of this is just basically checkbox full feature things that you will see in the likes of Godot and Unity. So then if you want to try and keep graphical parity with them, these are the kind of features you need to add. But hopefully, again, the performance that a lot of people are screaming out for will be gained by porting to Vulkan. Now, in addition to, let's see if I go the right direction here. There we go. I got it. That took, ooh, no, went too far. Uh, he's also looking at some improvements in the physics side of things. Now, one thing to keep in mind with the Godot game engine, with the move to 3.0, I think, not 3.0, yeah, 3.0, they implemented the open source bullet physics, replacing their own built-in physics engine. Well, since that happened, the physics, um, physics engine from NVIDIA was also open source. So that has a little bit of an impact on what can happen here. But that move to support Bullet gave them the ability to support a whole lot more things like soft body dynamics. And we started seeing some of that in 3.1. We're gonna to continue to see a refinement of the physics functionality now that there is a new, more powerful underlying physics engine for it to exploit. But again, you also have the physics engine that's being explored. We'll get back to that in a second. So on the 2D physics side of things, which by the way, the 2D physics still uses the in-house built physics engine. It is not using something like Bullet or Box 2D. It uses Godot's own um, purpose-built physics engine for that stuff. Uh, but we got optimized SAT code and use simpler algorithm for primitives, uh, warm start using name segments or points instead of prox proximity cache, maybe add quad tree or balanced tree based indexer, add buoyancy so objects can float in planes, optimize convex shapes using a binary tree for support and projection, make solvers multi-threaded. So basically what you're saying here is improve performance, uh, give the ability to, um, well, most of this actually boils down to improved performance other than add buoyancy. Uh, that's new functionality right there, but you know, nobody is gonna shirk at new performance or better performance, I don't think. And then on the 3D side of things, as I mentioned, as of physics 3.4, uh, in December, it is now an open source project. So they're gonna look at um, using it as an optional backend or possibly replacing Bullet. As I, said, as I mentioned, Bullet is the new physics in 3.0 that replaced the existing 3D in-house physics. And evaluate fixing and modernize Godot physics for implementing SAT code again, optimize convex shapes using binary tree, uh, support cylinder and use EPA feedback for cylinder, cylinder collision, add soft body support like bullet, I thought that was in 3.1. Uh, make solvers multi-threaded again and add buoyancy support over a plane. So you're seeing a lot of the functionality that they want to add on the 2D side of things is also being looked at on the 3D side of things. So across the board, he's basically looking at improving the performance of the physics engine and possibly implementing the PhysX open source physics engine from NVIDIA. <sighs> and that's it. That is what he is looking at for the future of Godot 4.0 or possibly 4.1. Now again, one last reminder, Godot is not a one-man effort, and um, Juan tends to focus on the underlying architecture type stuff mostly, although he's easily distracted and adds lots of other features on the way, but you can expect all kinds of other features across the board. This is just more of an infrastructure or plumbing type roadmap of what is coming in the future. So don't look at this list and go, oh no, I wanted feature X, Y, or Z, because there's a good chance that someone else in the community could potentially provide that for you. So taking a tentative look at this list is there something that you see on there that you're really excited about are you really looking forward to uh, the Vulcan back end port are you having some performance issues that you hopefully like to see solved or would you have liked to have seen them focus in a different direction I'd love to know all of those things comments down below and I will talk to you all later goodbye